Hey guys, and welcome back to Altcoin Buzz Spotlight with me, Leia Heilpan, the show where we speak to entrepreneurs, innovators, and thought leaders in the cryptocurrency and the blockchain space. Joining me today is Zane Rana, the founder of Daffy Protocol, the company aiming to reward users in every decentralized network based on their adoption. But before we jump in, don't forget to hit the like button and hit subscribe so you never miss a video. And let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next and which topics you want us to cover. Zane, welcome to Altcoin Buzz. How are you doing today? I'm really good. I'm really good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. It's good to chat and I do just want to jump straight in. So tell us, what is the Daffy protocol? Daffy is really interesting. Um, it basically allows for networks to reward their users based on their actual adoption. Um, this means that you can incentivize early users without, rather than giving them out tons of tokens, but through the growth and demand and consumption of the actual underlying network. So this will change the way staking, liquidity provision, uh, bounties, participation in projects have been incentivized, which is pretty cool. So what exactly is a demand pegged model and how does that help overcome inflation? Well, everything since Bitcoin has kind of been designed the same way, meaning that they kind of use time as a constant or a factor to measure their network inflation, meaning that staking is defined by uh, time periods and um, liquidity provision is tokens allocated per um, different constants and different metrics, but they're all revolving around time. You hear like time release smart contracts used often. Um, but the thing is, um, markets are dictated by demand and consumption, not time. So what Daffy quite intelligently does is it allows for um, the emission of tokens or network value to be tied and proportional to the actual demand of the network. So we use oracles to feed in information and it allows um, a network to actually create a synthetic uh, that's tied to its own demand. And the synthetic itself is kind of like an intermediary. It's not tradable or anything, but it's to be burned for the underlying token. But it allows you to kind of adopt this wherever you are in the period of demand on a curve. Um, and that is where your reward rate would be at. So how does a synthetic work within the protocol though? Can you break that down? Yeah, um, so the way it would work is projects themselves would lock their underlying token, a small portion of it to, to begin with. Um, and in doing so, they would create a D token. Now, D tokens are synthetics that are, um, I guess, algorithmically changing in quantity relative to the underlying token's demand. Um, and that itself is then distributed like a standard token, like a standard distribution um, to every participant in that economy. And it kind of works in a plug and play architecture. It's not that disruptive to current models. And um, it would allow for essentially better incentive models, more longevity, less supply shocks to markets, and um, I guess better overall uh, users in the long run. But is Daffy Protocol only applicable to new projects or can existing projects actually use it as well and help update their token distribution model essentially? Uh, both. And we kind of okay. have split them in two categories. And we've had like, phenomenal feedback so far because I guess the consensus is that projects want to reward their network without destroying the token. And they want to favor the longer term users greater. So I'll give you a breakdown of, for example, new users. Now, uh, sorry, new pro uh, projects with new users. So these are at a stage where they need to acquire, um, it's a user acquisition phase, they need to acquire participants. So you often see in DeFi having a very attractive uh, yield rates and the very attractive APY rates, et cetera. And yeah. this is a very short term um, quick fix to acquire users at the cost of hyperinflation and devaluing in the long run, because you've now emitted a huge portion of tokens in doing so. It's the only way to do it. It's needed, but it is the only way to do it. Um, now, using Daffy Protocol, the way this would work is new projects would be able to incentivize still, but people would burn a reduced quantity to stake for a reduced quantity end reward in that early phase. As that network grows in adoption, grows in actual transactions and volume, etc., that reward or that synthetic, the holders, the long-term users, would be rewarded later instead of earlier. And then for existing projects, Sometimes with things like node incentivization, it's quite difficult to change. And that's fine because they can still have liquidity programs. They can still have um, developer programs with incentives and bounties, etc. 
And the way that would work is they can incentivize um, without actually disrupting and causing huge supply shocks. So Daffy was really inspired by that whole 2018 crash. We were working on a few cool things around that time, kind of like a self-funded ventures. And in 2018, we kind of saw that the model of incentivizing users in decentralization isn't required. It's kind of the backbone of everything. Um, you wouldn't have miners without uh, Bitcoin being given. And that is the entire underlying, I guess, uh, fundamental of how you create anything in decentralization. Where you don't have trust and identity, you use network incentives. Um, and in doing so in a way where it's kind of now a longer term model, one that economically makes more mm. sense. Um, it's pretty cool and hopefully we'll see this work out quite well, especially as, especially as people are scared, you know, like you hear a lot of people talking about next year, maybe a bear market and stuff like that. And yeah. really the chaotic model of incentivizing is the exact same, um, more or less. So this is pretty cool to come out. Yeah, it is really interesting. And I know that you guys um, have partnered with some really cool projects, particularly some major institutions in England and some universities. So tell us more about this. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been kind of really focused on the whole um, education alignment. So working with academia. Um, prior to that, we were actually incubated by uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland in 2020. So we've worked quite closely with them uh, because we've been in stealth mode for quite a long time, testing a few different cool stuff. And um, uh, we're quite proud about it because you always hear a stigma about banks versus blockchain and stuff. Yeah. But many are very forward thinking. So we're actually under their fintech arm. Uh, they support us with events, um, uh, consulting guidance, and uh, offices and stuff like that as well. So it was quite pivotal to our entire success. And well, I mean, we're early stage still, but I mean, it was quite pivotal in the whole, um, you know, backing yourself as a small startup phase, which we kind of like did for a while. And then when it came to academia, we presented the entire protocol to quite a lot of um, universities, researchers, students, etc. So we've done like loads of posts and articles about that um, over the past year or so. Uh, it's been pretty cool. I mean, you know, when you're trying to get the next generation of um, I guess participants in this world of decentralization, blockchain and crypto, I think, and this is a personal belief of my own, I think you've got to get the next generation through um, understanding and education, which is like how we want to position Daffy and how we want to position our team's ethics as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about um, being relatable and um, being attractive to the next generation. I'm totally with you because essentially they're going to be the next people using your protocol. Yep. Um, but I always think it's really interesting to hear, um, you know, DeFi projects sort of closing that gap or sort of bridging, um, you know, with the traditional world. I always find that really fascinating to yeah. see how, how that works and how it plays out. Um, but you obviously have the DAFI um, token. So tell me what is value and where does it come and where does its value come from and what's its use case? Sorry. So the DAFI tokens themselves, you can stake them for synthetics as rewards. Typically, when you stake a token, you get a token back. Um, the paradigm shift we're now introducing is you stake and you get a synthetic instead. So we'll be introducing that model on DAFI itself. Um, and we basically create DDAFI, which is a synthetic unit that's tied to the DAFI network consumption, demand, etc. So we'll be launching that pretty soon for the whole staking architecture. And DAFI will also then be users' governance in, in the entire architecture and for the entire protocol. So uh, there's, they're the two main use cases. But with this entire like new DNA of how decentralization will be created and how network inflation will be created, there's quite a huge host of different use cases, but we kind of just keep it very simple uh, just for the time being and other things can come down the future. It's pretty cool. And what does the roadmap look like? What can we expect in a year from now? Oh, okay. So we've got this entire short mission statement, which is switch to DAFI. And it's, I guess our entire runway is built up towards that, where we'd get protocols layer one, layer two. Uh, we would get dApps, platforms, cryptocurrencies, essentially to rather than distributing their own token uh, to be distributing this synthetic tied to their demand and the adoption of their network, it would build uh, better adoption, longer term users, better economies, better token models, etc. That's kind of like a brief mission statement and everything from now until a year is aligned exactly with that. So we've got our own staking coming out in the summer for DAFI synthetics. Um, we've then got other protocols to create their own flavors of these synthetics coming out um, a couple of months after that. And um, we would be launching our own internal products on top of this in inflation model as well. Um, but again, it's all around that same mission statement, just switch to DAFI. 
And just finally then, can you tell us about your token launch, the specifics about the token launch? Yeah, um, I always forget about the token launch. Um, we've got the whitelisting that's currently undergoing. Um, we've got, no, well, actually, we've got the ending of the public sale, and then we've got the um, uh, exchange listing as well, which I think is scheduled for the 17th of uh, March. And then after that is, um, yeah, pretty much the 17th of March is a big day, really. All right, well, it's just around the corner, so that's really exciting. Um, Zayn, I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and best of luck um, for the 17th of March. We'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thank you.